This is how to use the Everlywell Home Testosterone Level Test Kit. This is gonna be very similar in process to the Everly Well food allergy test that I did in an earlier video. Pull everything out. All right, so as the instructions say, you've got your alcohol prep pad, you've got the collection card, you've got a couple lancets, you've got a Band-Aid, biohazard bag, gauze pad, and hiding in the bottom of the package is your return envelope and shipping label. So you have all that set so that it'll go right back where it needs. Now what it wants you to do first is scan or register the kit. So just go to your camera on your smartphone, open link. And again, I've used this before, so it should be very similar. It's asking me for my login for Everly. If this is the first Everly Well kit that you've used, you'll have to set up an account. I already have one. It asks for the kit ID, which I don't know why, because I just scanned it. But whatever, see, uh, and it's basically right next to that QR code. And then it confirms it's the testosterone level kit. And then they ask you a whole bunch more stuff. I've already done this once, so it's a little bit annoying. I'm just gonna go right to collect sample now. So the first thing you wanna do is warm your hands with hot water for at least a minute, shake them at your sides for 15 to 20 seconds. So I'll go do that first. All right, I put my hands under hot water for a minute and then I shook them at my sides for 15 to 20 seconds. It wants you to now pick the best finger puncture location. So what it's showing is the left hand, I'm gonna do that because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you can use your right hand. It shows the fourth finger, not right in the center, but off to the side. And it says you should be laying flat, placed on a firm surface. So pull out the alcohol pad and wipe the area where you're going to be drawing the blood. You also want to take the collection well, and this particular one has five bubbles. And as it says in the phone app, you wanna basically bleed until you cover the full bubbles, not partial ones, that way they can get a good reading. So I'm gonna lay my finger down. You're gonna take this off, put it down in the firm spot, go off to the side, and just press it until it springs out. And then you can vaguely see it starting to bleed there. It doesn't hurt too bad, but it's also a pretty small hole, so it doesn't get a lot of blood. That's why this step takes quite a while. I tend to have thick blood anyway. I know they want it not to hurt, but this is a really slow process. I could probably cut myself shaving and get a hell of a lot more blood faster. So I ended up using both lancets and now it's bleeding pretty good. So I'll easily be able to fill in the circles. All right, we've got all five. I'm gonna take the gauze off. Put the gauze there. Seal it with a Band-Aid before I bleed all over my table. All right, now the Band-Aid's in place, so I shouldn't bleed all over. Okay, now that I have this card ready, it wants you to check in the back and make sure that the blood comes through, which it has. Leave card art for 30 minutes or until completely dry. So now I'm gonna let it sit here for 30 minutes. While this is drying, the reason I'm using this test kit in the first place is while I was in Florida getting stem cell treatments, the guy that runs the place was asking me how I was doing on things like energy levels. We talked about the electrolyte imbalances that I may have had through the uh, keto diet that I was doing and how I'd added a cheat day. It was for the heart since I had heart surgery last year. He asked if I knew what my testosterone levels were and I said that I didn't. So that's why I wanted to do this test, see what the numbers are. It's something that's important for overall health as well as energy levels. I know I'm sleeping a lot more now, but that's also a good thing because that means I'm putting the stress aside and able to get a better night's sleep, resting more. 
I'm working out twice a day, so all that is positive. I just wanna make sure everything's the levels where it should be. All right, now that these are dry, it says tuck cover here, tucked. You write my name. Collection date is April 4th, 23, birth date. I'm going to put it in the biohazard bag. And even though the instructions in this kit didn't say it, I think they did in the last kit, but you do want to leave the silica gel in the packet. So take your sample, make sure it's filled out correctly. Drop it in the bag, seal the biohazard bag. And then I'm going to take this packet here at the bottom and then fold the bag over. So I'm going to tuck it way down there. Pull the strip off. Okay. And then take the return label off, put it on there. So I just go drop this in the mailbox and see how soon I get back the results. All right, I received the results of the testosterone test, this being the first one that I've done. And as I click over here to review results, what it shows is that I was only at 401, which is to me kind of low. It says that normal is 240 to 950. Let's see what more details is. It tells us about the what testosterone does. Well, I was curious to know, it just kind of goes through here a bunch more details about the testosterone but it doesn't really say much more about for my age. So if I just open up another Google page and say average testosterone levels for male by age. So here's a table, total T 252 to 916. So that is the range and again, I am on what we consider kind of the lower side of that. Now, whether you're a male or female, low testosterone levels can contribute to lower energy. Uh, it's just something good for overall health, libido, all those things. I don't know a lot about what might affect it in females, but for males, I know multiple things can affect your testosterone levels. There are things like activity, physical activity. So if you're doing heavy lifting, then you're going to see higher levels of things like testosterone and HGH in your system. If you are getting enough sleep, that's going to help levels, and I'm getting plenty of sleep. Diet is one thing where I might actually be falling short. If you've watched my other health videos, you know that I've been on a keto diet, and I did add a third day cheat meal because I learned that a keto diet can not only mess with your electrolyte balances, which I was primarily concerned with because of the heart health and the rhythm issues I was having, but one doctor actually said that it reduced his testosterone to be on a keto diet because he wasn't getting these insulin spikes. So currently what I'm doing is a third day cheat day to try to get that insulin spike and see if that helps with things like the electrolytes and overall health. Now, one option I have is I could go to a insulin spike every day and adjust my diet so that I'm getting enough carbs at breakfast to generate an insulin spike and see if that changes these levels. And stress is something that can affect these levels. I'm doing a really good job right now because of the heart of managing my stress. So I think I'm pretty good there. Another thing is stimulation, right? I haven't dated for say 14, 15 months. So my body might possibly be saying, well, he doesn't really need as much testosterone. So we might not be producing as much. Now your body's intelligent. So if your body doesn't see a need for testosterone, it may lower the levels just naturally. Jay at the clinic where I get my stem cell treatments has said that he's seen kids in their twenties, males coming in that appear otherwise healthy that have lower numbers than this in their testosterone, which is pretty scary. But he said that part of it is not only it's the food you eat, it's our environment, but if they're not active and they're not doing intense activity like weightlifting or strength training, their body isn't going to generate the testosterone because you don't need testosterone playing on your phone or playing video games. So in that same way, because I haven't dated for 14, 15 months, 
my body may not be seeing a need for as much testosterone. It is in terms of the activity for the weightlifting in that, but maybe not in the libido sense. So a lot of these factors can contribute to what your testosterone levels are. Now, it's not something I'm really worried about. A 401 is still within the normal range. And especially because I'm in the upper band of that 40 to 49 age group. However, it's just something I want to be as healthy as I can. So I'll look into my health habits a little bit more and see if there's anything I can tweak in terms of diet or whatever it may be that might increase those numbers a little bit more. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.